Hello YouTube, this is Morgan, Airspeed Prime here with my next Borto discussion video. This is going to be my speculation heading into Borto Chapter 71, which is coming out on the 20th, I believe. Uh, the significant thing about this chapter is that it is going to be a volume ending chapter. The chapters, of course, are always grouped into kind of groups of four, and this is going to be a four of four in whichever volume uh, it ends up being printed in. So that usually means that we either get sort of one of two things happening, that the overall chapter has something very, very eventful happen in it as we move into the next stage of the story, or it's more of a normal chapter, but it ends with a really, really big cliffhanger that will be explored in the following four chapters, following volume. Um, I think we're maybe more set up here to have the sort of uh, the second one that I mentioned there of I think there's some stuff that sort of has to happen straight away before we potentially get into like I suppose the the big maybe final fight before we go into the time skip which I, I suppose has to be the case potentially um, in that the big event that happens uh, from chapter 70 is right at the end Code finally gets the limiter on his powers removed and immediately goes to kill Amado. Now, straight away, you know, Amado's not going to die. He is too mysterious. There's too much going on. He's connected to too many things, and we know so little about him. There is no possible way he dies in the opening pages of the next chapter. So immediately, I'm assuming at least a quarter, if not half of the chapter, is going to have to revolve around uh, all the characters in that room discussing this. Amado and Code... Ada and Demon involved as well because you again have that dynamic where he is the one who gave them all of their uh, augmentations to tor turn them into cyborgs. Like this, this guy is the reason Ada has all these weird powers. Demon has all his weird powers. Same with Code. Um, you you know that he can either just through being important and interesting prevent his death, or he probably has planned ahead and has some sort of a thing where like the code to take the limiter away from code also um, means code can't hurt him or something like that. A lot of this stuff makes sense where like if he can put the ability of like the weird abilities that Ada and Demon have into them, he can absolutely make it so that their powers like don't work on him in some way or another. Um, so Amino will survive and... This is why, like, on this side of things, because otherwise it feels like all, we, all we're waiting, doing with Code is probably him waiting for the other characters to arrive, to have the big fight, and see where we resolve things there. Does anyone die? Um, where do we go with regards to sort of Code's overall goal? Because there is a lot going on with Code. We haven't really focused on him taking too much of the action. But now that he has his powers, he can take the lead in a lot of these situations. Because all of a sudden, he's now, I guess, the most powerful character. It was Kawaki before now, but now Code should be more than a match, I would guess, for him. Now, obviously, what does he need to do here? He needs to fulfill his promise to Ada. Ada was loyal to him in the last chapter, despite having a very easy deal to get Kawaki. Um, she chose to, I suppose, still go ahead with the deal with Code. So when everyone arrives to fight Code, which I'm guessing is what will happen, he is going to have to fight Kawaki because Kawaki is the most powerful of the, the characters who are going to come after him, but not kill him and not injure him so badly that he upsets Ada. So he has to sort of deliver Kawaki to Ada. I don't know how exactly that's going to happen. From that point of view, it feels like Ada has missed her one opportunity to, to, in a way, get what she wants. And I don't know how she can really kind of uh, prevent that otherwise. It's it's a weird situation that she's kind of put herself in. The other thing is that he has a list of people that he wants to kill. Now, it's basically most of the main important characters. It's like what uh, Shikamaru's on the list, I guess Amado's on the list, Naruto, Boruto, Sasuke, Kawaki. But Kawaki is off limits. He can't kill Boruto except by feeding him to the the, the ten tails because he needs that for the other part of his plan. So at least sort of the characters that he theoretically wants to kill as being sort of Naruto, Sasuke, uh, Shikamaru, because Amado is going to survive. We know Naruto survives going to the time skip, which means Shikamaru and Sasuke are the ones who are maybe 
up for potentially being killed off if you want to do something big. I know a lot of people have been predicting Sasuke's death potentially as the big, you know, kind of halfway point style thing of Borto. Um, Shikamaru, again, it feels like you theoretically could kill him off if you want to, but I still feel there's maybe more to do with him. Whereas I think there's more of the setup there with Sasuke as the 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 ma like Borto's master, his his sensei. Uh, he was not there during the last confrontation and he really regrets that. He has that promise with Borto that, you know, I'll prevent you from going out of control. So if there's anyone who's going to sacrifice themselves, it feels like it will be Sasuke just because of everything else going on. Which leads us into Code's overall plan is to grow the divine tree. Harvest the chakra fruit and eat it because Ishiki told him that if he does that, he will become and Otsutsuki. That's not all going to happen in one chapter, but that's the pathway that Code wants to follow. And can that actually happen or not? That's the problem. Okay, he's maybe powerful enough to defeat Kawaki and hand him over to Ada. They have a conversation. That, that can happen. He's powerful enough to defeat them, plus all the other characters around. He has Borto, he can feed Borto to the, the chakra fruit. We know that, that doesn't happen, but Theoretically, he gets into a position where he's able to do that. Um, and then he maybe defeats Naruto and Sasuke and kills maybe one or two of them. It's, it's, it's hard to know what exact way they're going. But we know a few things don't happen. And in a way, it all points to Code can't win. He can't fulfill his overall goal. Because nothing fulfills the criteria because we know what happens in in the opening scene of chapter one uh, flash forward so what actually happens here and that's why it feels like this probably has to be a major battle where they ultimately win but lose something in the process and it leads into whatever happens next um it's it's hard to picture like exactly how much they go um i feel just with the approach that they tend to take as the creative team we'll probably be lucky if we even start to open the door on Amado they tend to go for give us way less than they potentially could I think Amado will start talking we'll get some interesting things with him and maybe be interrupted cliffhanger ending the hero characters are here at Code's hideout ready to fight him this is it the big fight no one's gonna run away from this one there will be a winner that's what we're doing. I, I think that's probably the direction that we kind of have to go in. Otherwise, how many more times do we have to start and restart this fight and organize things differently? This is this kind of feels like what has to happen. On the other side of the story, probably the thing I'm most fearful of going into this chapter is that they spend an eternity deciding who wants to go after code? Who do we bring with us? Have an argument with this character about why you can or can't come. And eventually, after like 20 pages of talking, they finally decide who's going. Look, some of that will need to happen. Because I, th I still think there's more, like say, Naruto wants to talk to Kawaki some more. There'll be, I suppose, some Borto Kawaki stuff potentially to talk about. Um, and just catching everyone up to speed because obviously Shikamaru was mainly the character involved in this he's gonna have to tell Naruto and Sasuke what went on and again they'll all have to decide okay how, what's happening here they'll tell everyone that Code took Amado away they'll be like back to his base Sasuke should immediately be able to pop up and be like I'm pretty sure I found their base while I was uh, searching during the last arc. Because he, he told us directly that he was there. Uh, I don't think he knows for sure. 100% that it was Code's base. But he should be able to connect the dots together. And realize that's where they need to go. So there shouldn't be any problem about figuring out where to go. It's just organizing who is going. And, and, so, and stuff like that. I think Naruto, Sasuke, Borto, Kawaki. Are the four characters who like have to be involved in this you could send Shikamaru there but you probably should leave him back at uh, the village for protection similarly you could send Delta but again you probably don't want to send as many people as you can just because the way Ada's powers work it's probably not good to send a lot of people um so 
I, I do think it will mainly be those four. And then potentially we might have some sort of a thing where like Sarda and Mitsuki like overhear this happening and decide to follow. Because they've, they've been sort of reintroduced. I'm not really sure what's going on. Are we just setting them up to if time skip is coming once this fight is over? Are we um, going to actually deal with them? I'm not really sure. But the approach from the manga has tended to be only focus on the main characters and in a way do the bare minimum with those main characters. So uh, I do think they'll keep this as small scale as possible, but the stakes should be quite high going into this fight. So that's my prediction for what I think the chapter will um, mostly be. Unfortunately, I do think we probably will get a lot of talking from like the likes of like Naruto, Kawaki, Borto, Sasuke. That might not lead to all that much. It'll take up a lot of page count, but won't mean all that much because we know they're just prepared to to come and fight that is the way i think it will happen that they'll go to code i think it's been too heavily set up because i think code otherwise you would think code would go straight after straight back to the village for revenge but he's going to be kept there talking to amado reveals with amado begin to come out or whatever you know we don't know what what exactly is going to happen there and that's the section of the chapter i'm actually most interested in is that We've had stops and starts with Amado. There have been like four or five separate times where it feels like they're finally going to tell us something about Amado and they haven't. It kind of feels like it has to happen here. I'm going to be pretty disappointed if the result of this is just sort of like, I made you so you can't hurt me and he's just there. That's it. That's all we do with Amado. We quickly resolve this cliffhanger for this last week's chapter uh, with technology and that's it i think we actually have to open the door on what's going on with him and get into some of that stuff address why he's super important as a character outside of just he knows things why does he know these things that's that's what i want to know about so um beyond that um if we do get to a fight I'm guessing Code is going to be at least a little bit more powerful than Kawaki, maybe just due to sort of like experience or something like that, uh, but they should be relatively even. Um, Naruto and Sasuke, it's obviously, a, you know, a little bit unproven how, just how notable they are without sort of their top tier abilities that they've lost. So Sasuke has no Rinnegan going into this fight. And Naruto doesn't have any of the Kurama-related powers. But they still have high-level abilities that uh, are not those things. So they can do things, but it feels like they are kind of more there to support, in a way, for Kawaki and maybe Borto, rather than the focus. But they're still super-skilled, super-talented shinobi, like potentially still best in the world. So they're not going to be useless in all of this but i do think they're going to set up the idea that borto will be the turning point in all of this and um, I, I i get the impression they'll probably do it where like code is able to take borto and kawaki at the same time um but when borto gets more used to his abilities uh that will turn the tides and they'll be able to really um yeah dominate uh, code if they absolutely have to now, the other thing here is that Ada is there. So even without getting directly involved in the fight, she can just be there. She can affect Naruto and Sasuke, but not Boruto and Kawaki. So that's interesting. And then Demon is the other point. Will, he, will this be him finally getting involved in things properly? Um, again, because he's such a young character, I find it hard to realize like i sort of think about what exact way he's going to be used in the fight because if he just gets paired off one-on-one -on -one with people it feels weird if like a character is potentially going to have to like kill or really badly wound this really young kid um but we'll, we'll see how they go about that i have a feeling he might just be used like he has been up to now with a little bit of a prop where it's just code uh grabs him out of nowhere for his ability to work and just deflect something and that's about it uh otherwise like 
it feels like it's kind of clear based on the way the power works how you resolve that of like someone attacks not with an intent to kill but sort of wanting to protect and sort of coming at it from a different emotion will probably lead to an attack actually connecting and and so on um other than that i i don't really know what else there is to speculate about um it feels pretty clear to me that that's probably the way they will do it um my, again my hope is just make most of the pages meaningful i hope this isn't a chapter where uh 20 pages are just sort of skip past them you don't need to give them a second look and the content is really only there in the other 20 pages. We've had some denser chapters before. I hope that this one can deliver and just finally give us a little bit of direction that we've been lacking a little bit uh, and kind of give us a sense for like, oh yeah, this is the final fight before the time skip. The time skip is going to come after this. And uh, I'm just I'm just interested with Ko now that he's at full power to see what way he's positioned. Is he just sort of the final boss of this first uh, section of the story? Or is he going to be super important for the entire rest of the series? Because I don't really know what way to treat him up to now. I don't really feel like he's the, the most amazing villain we've ever had. I'm sort of interested, but I'm not fully on board. And I'm not sure if that's sort of purposeful or not. But um, there are my speculations going into chapter 71 of Borto. I will be reviewing that chapter the day it comes out. So definitely uh, stay tuned to the channel in uh, six days time for that review. Other than that, let me know what your thoughts are going into the chapter. That's been the video. Thanks for watching and bye.